Okay, this is section 1.1 for Mac 1105, and in this section we're going to review a little bit of information concerning how to plot points in the rectangular coordinate system, how to graph linear equations, how to interpret information about graphing utilities, and how to set the viewing window so that you can see what you're graphing, and how to use a graph to determine the, the intercepts, namely the x and the y intercepts, and how to interpret information by graphs that model a particular real life situation. So we start with um, a reminder that this is called the Cartesian coordinate system or the Cartesian coordinate plane. It consists of four quadrants. They are numbered going counterclockwise. And in the first quadrant, you're gonna notice that everything that you plot will have both a positive X and a positive y. Recall that when you name a point or plot a point, which are also called ordered pairs, you name the numbers in a specific order, hence the name. So like for instance, if you want to go plot this number here, you would name the x first, then the y. Notice again, as stated here, they are both positive. Anything in quadrant one has both positive x, positive y. When you move into quadrant two, let's say that you are right here, you will notice that all x's are negative while the y's are positive, such as this point, negative two, always x's first, then the y. Likewise, continuing on to quadrant three, everything in quadrant three has both a negative x as well as a negative y. So if you are naming something like this, it will be called negative four for your x value, negative five. And then moving into that last quadrant, all x's are positive while the y values are all negative in this last quadrant. So something like um, this right here, positive two, negative three positive 2, negative 3, just as stated here. Next problem asks you to plot some points and just practice telling what the shape is. So 0, 0 would be right there. That's also known as the origin. And if you go to 3, 0, that would mean out 3 units on the x-axis, 0 units on the y-axis. So stay right there. And then for the next point, 0, negative 6, that means 0 units on the x-axis, but do drop down to negative 6. Then plotting 3, negative 6, that would be over 3 and down 6. And if you were going to name the point, or name the actual shape, excuse me, that would be a rectangle. Because this is 3 units long, this is 3 units long. And then both of these opposite sides are 6. So the shape there is a rectangle. Let's move to the next page. And on the next page, there's a reminder of some of the shapes that you have seen. Some of the things that you're going to be graphing quite often. There's quite a bit of graphing once you get to Mac 1105. Whenever you see a linear equation, both the y and the x are first degree, this is the shape that you will get. If the x is squared, yet the y remains first degree, the shape will be a parabola. Parabolas can either open up or down if they're functions. There's also the y being squared, but those aren't functions. We'll just keep our conversation on y is equal to x squared right now. That gives you a parabolic shape. When the x is cubed, it turns it into this kind of curve, and it can turn the other way. It can open the other way, depending on if whether there's negatives. But again, let's just talk about the basic shape incurred by putting a cube on the x while leaving the y in first degree mode. That would be the cubic shape. And then the absolute value shape, we'll be talking about that quite a bit 
that is a V shape. So it has a vertex at the origin, just like a parabola. This is rounded while this is a um, straight, you know, V shape. Okay, and the next question, first examples underneath that, we're going to be looking to get a shape. I have given you the shapes up here so that you can start to memorize and know what to expect. A square on the X is going to give you a parabolic shape. So you should be getting that shape here. Par parabolas, again, they can open either up or down, depending on the sign that's in front of them. This one's going to open down. But if you see a square on your X, you're going to get a parabolic shape. The sign in front of it will dictate whether it opens up or down. Because of that, you're going to see this ends up opening down, but just filling in these points will show you that. So you're expected to show the work here, not just put it in the calculator. So be prepared to do what you're, what's being demonstrated for you in the lectures. So for this first one, it says plug in negative 2 for x right into this equation. So it's 3 minus, we're plugging in negative 2. I'm putting it in parentheses so that the negative is squared as well as the number. So be careful with that. Okay, so this is 3 minus, no matter what you square, you get a positive. Just because there's a minus there is because it was actually in the equation. But we're getting a positive for this part. So 3 take away 4 is negative 1. That ends up being the partner. That goes with negative 2. We'll plot all of them later. We already know what shape to expect. Then moving on to... The next one where we're supposed to be plugging into that same equation, negative 1. So y is equal to 3 minus negative 1 squared. So it's 3 minus anything squared is positive. 3 take away that 1 is 2. So 2 is the partner that goes with this. Okay, moving on to the next plug-in where we're supposed to be plugging in 0 into this equation. So 3 take away 0 squared. This would be 3 take away nothing or just 3. Moving on to the next value where we are plugging in a 1. But notice that whether you plug in a negative 1 or a positive 1, it's, and you square it, it's just 1. So you're going to get the same answer that you got here. And these are symmetric points, they're called. So when plugging in 1, you get a 2. And you're going to get the same answer for plugging in positive 2 as you get for negative 2. Because whether you square negative 2 or positive 2, like I'm about to do, you're going to get a 4, so you're going to end up with 3 minus 4. So even though... We're plugging in this number, positive 2. It's still 3 minus 4, just like it was here, and you get negative 1. So if you start to realize that there are symmetrical points, you can use that to your advantage. So the shape is a parabola, and when we plot the points, you'll see that shape emerging. So negative 2, negative 1 is right there. And then if you go to negative 1, positive 2, you're right here. If you go to 0, 3, you're right there. If you go to 1, 2, you're right there. These are called mirror images because they look right at each other across the y-axis. And if you go to 2, negative 1, then you're right down here. And these are mirror images. So you can connect these to get your parabolic shape. Let's see if I plotted that right. Actually, I messed up on this last point. I was supposed to be at 2, negative 1. That should flare out just a little bit more. Okay, so there was, that, there was one at 1, 2, so I have to go through here. thought that was a little bit skinny. And there you have your nice parabola. It's perfectly symmetrical on this side as it is here. If you were to crease the paper here, you would have matching images on either side of the y-axis. We'll talk about that more in the next chapter. Okay, so moving on to the next shape, 
where now you're just practicing getting the absolute value graph, but not getting it through a calculator, being able to back up the shape and show that you have knowledge that this particular symbol, absolute value, causes a V-shape, whereas the square causes a parabolic shape. So you'll be expected to know how to do that without a calculator. Some things you'll be using calculators for, but many things, most things you'll be doing by hand. So absolute value, they're telling you what to plug in in each case, what's the shape. You should know just from the symbol, but you know, you might want to graph it first and just let that shape emerge and then answer what the shape is. So when plugging in the first value, we're plugging into this equation, we're plugging in negative two. And these also have symmetrical points or mirror images as we call them. So when you plug in negative two, you get two plus two is equal to four. So we just found out that the partner for negative two is four. You're going to get the same answer for two because whether you plug in a negative two here, you get a two. And when you plug in a positive two, you get a two. So you really got the have the answer for both of these points. So I'm not going to do both of them. When you go to do this one, it's going to be absolute value of negative one. But whether you plug a negative one in here, like you're doing right now, or whether you plug in a positive one, you're going to get the same answer. And then according to the equation, you're also supposed to add two. Taking the absolute value of negative one would be one. And if you took the absolute value of positive one, it would also be one. You're going to add two. That results in three. So when plugging in negative one, you get a three. You're going to get the same answer if you plugged in positive one. Just cutting down on the work a little bit. Plugging in zero right in here. Absolute value of zero is zero. And then you're adding two. So your answer is two. Okay, go plot these points. Negative 2, 4, so that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. And then negative 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. Then 0, 2 right there. Then 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. And then 2, 4. Let's see how you have that nice absolute value shape. So we've done the par parabola, we've done the absolute value graph. Okay, moving to the next page, we start to talk about how to adjust the viewing window in a calculator. So some of these questions you'll be shown some numbers and be expected to know how to use them in your graphing calculator. So when you're given a problem in my math lab and they tell you to use this particular window, just be aware that this first set of numbers, the one, the first three numbers that come before the word by, because they're telling you they want the window to be negative three, three, one by negative five, five, one. They're giving you the dimensions for the x-axis, then they're giving you the dimensions for the y-axis. So this is referred to, which it says right here, that very first number is the x-min. These are This is all about your x's, this first set of numbers. This is the x-max, and this is called the scale, which it says right there. That first number is x-min, the three is the x-max, and the one is the x-scale. X scale means you're jumping in increments of one. So every notch mark on the X axis counts for one. Because sometimes you can jump in fives, you can jump in various numbers. Then the next set of numbers will refer to the Y axis. So this is all about the Ys. And this would be the Y min. They always give you the min first. This would be the Y max. And this would be the scale. So in this problem, you'd be jumping in increments of two. Every notch on the x-axis, or on the y-axis, excuse me, would count for two units. Okay, so if you were given a problem like this, where you're being shown a graph and being asked to name the scale, just go by the grid marks. Don't try to count all the way to the end there. 
So I'm just going to use what I'm looking at right here, going by the exact grid marks that I see. I'm going to have to finish this in the next video.